Alright, in this video we're going to see how to solve a linear equation with one variable. We're going to start off with a pretty basic one, and the uh, optional first step is that if there are fractions in the equation, you can clear those fractions. Um, this one doesn't have any fractions, so we don't need to do that step. Uh, then we're going to sort of simplify each side separately. So you look at just the left side, right? We want to simplify that. Right. As you see on the left side, we need to think of that as an expression and refer back to the procedure for simplifying an algebraic expression. And that's when we distribute and then combine like terms. Now, in this case, we want to distribute the negative 2. So distributing the negative 2, we have negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 and negative 2 times negative 4x would be positive 8x. And that would then simplify the left side. The right side is already simplified. There are no parentheses and there are no like terms to combine. So we now have simplified both sides separately. We now want to combine the variable terms that are on opposite sides of the equal sign. So that's the 8x and the 3x. In order to do that, we're going to use the property that we can add any number to an equation as long as we add the same number to both sides. So you want to add the opposite of one of these. Uh, in this case, let's take the 3x. So we'll add the opposite would be adding a negative 3x. So negative 3x. We've got to do the exact same thing to the other side, negative 3x. All right, and so that's balanced because we added the same thing to both sides. Now we can simplify, and you see that we can make that 5x, and then on the right side goes to 0. And that's why we chose the opposite of one of them. So one of them goes away, and the other one is the combined term. All right, the variable terms are now combined. Now we want to combine the constant terms. And since we already have the variable term on one side, we want the constant term that's combined to be on the other side. So here you want to add the opposite of the number that's on the same side as the variable. So the variable is on the left side, and that means that we want to add the opposite of negative 2, which is positive 2, to both sides. So adding positive 2 to both sides then get negative 2 and positive 2 is 0, so I wanted to get rid of it on that side, and then it shows up as a 10 on the other side. All right, at the very end, we're going to divide both sides. And we want to divide by the coefficient of the variable term. And that's the number in front of the variable. In this case, it's the 5 right there. The 5 is the coefficient of the variable term. We want to divide both sides by 5. So we can divide both sides of an equation by any number except 0, as long as we divide both sides by the same number. All right, and when you simplify that, it's going to give you just x on the left and just a 2 on the right. Uh, it should be the solution, uh, but we can go ahead and check. And uh, the way to check is to replace x with 2 in the original equation. So I'm actually going to use the calculator for this because I think that's a good way to do it. So we go back to the original equation and we'll just go ahead and put in the left side. So negative 2 parentheses 1 minus 4, and instead of x, I'm going to put in 2, and get a number, right? And then we do the same thing on the right side, we have 3, plus 6, 2, plus 8, and 14. Since we get the same number on both sides, that means that it is a solution to the equation. All right, let's try another one. Again, this is one that does have not have any fractions. And 
and uh, the left side can be simplified. So we'd combine the like terms, both, in this case the variable is not x, it's t. Uh, but these are still like terms because they have the same variable. So we'll combine the two terms on the left, and we'll do that just by subtracting the coefficients. So 0 0.09 minus 4.5. So that's actually negative 4.41 t. The right side is again already simplified. So we can skip that. And we're now ready to combine the variable terms on opposite sides. So we have the negative 4.41t and the negative 0.53t. So we're going to combine those by adding the opposite of one of these terms to both sides. In this case, since the constant's already on the right, it would actually be good to get rid of the variable term on the right. And so we'll add the opposite of negative 0.53t to both sides. It's just positive 0.53t. And of course on the right that just adds to zero. And on the left we can take the negative 4.41 and add 0.53 and get negative 3.88. We don't need to combine the constant terms because there is only one constant term. There's no constant term on the left side. And the last step in the problem is to divide. Divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable term. In this case, it's the negative 3.88. So the answer would be Just a standard form of this fraction would be to make it have integers on the top and bottom. Which would be negative 2013 over 38,800. If you were to put this in to the calculator, you'll see that you actually get a pretty long decimal, so you could also figure out when that repeats and use that. So we want to now check this solution by substituting it back into the original equation. Oh, it should be negative. So negative. So let's look at the original equation, and we can uh, put it in the left side first. That's 0 0.09 times, and the number's in there, so we just hit second and the negative sign to recall the previously stored answer. Minus 4.5 times previously stored answer. So that would be one side, and we want to get the same thing on the other side, so 0 0.2013 minus 0.53 times, no, we don't have the number stored as a previous answer anymore. So we need to put it in.
and we see that we get the same number for both sides. So that means that this fraction is going to be the correct solution. All right, I've got one more. And this will show you how to clear fractions. When you have fractions, you can, of course, work with them using fraction arithmetic, but many students prefer to clear them. So what we want to do is figure out the common denominator. You see we have fractions with denominators of 3 and 4. So the common denominator would be 12. At least that's the least common denominator. You can use any common denominator, but if you know the least common denominator, it's going to make the numbers stay small. And then you multiply each term by that number. So that means that we multiply this first term by 12. And even though this is a whole number, it still gets multiplied by 12, right, each term. And then we multiply this term by 12. Now when you multiply the whole number, the common denominator, and the fractions, they should turn into a whole number because we specifically chose the common denominator to cancel out the denominators. So for instance, 12 and 1 third is just going to give you 4. And so this will just be 4x. The 12 and 2 is 24. And 12 and 2 thirds is going to be 4 times 2, which is 8. Alright, when we simplify the left side and right side this time, the left side is already simplified. And the right side we can distribute. So we distribute that 8. So 8 times x over 4 plus 8 times 1. And the 8 times 1 is just 8. And the 8 times x over 4 would give us 8 divided by 4 is 2x. So we're taking that whole number, dividing by the denominator, and then that result is multiplied with the numerator. OK, now both sides are simplified. Let's combine the variable terms. that are on opposite sides, 4x and 2x. We're going to add the opposite of one of these to both sides. Let's add the opposite of 2x, which is negative 2x, to both sides. All right, and when you do that, you'll get 2x on the left and 0 x on the right, so you get that. 2x plus 24 equals 8. Now you want to combine the constant terms, the 24 and the 8, and you want to do that by adding the opposite of the number on the same side as the variable side. So the variable's on the left, so we want to add the opposite of the number on the left. So we're going to add negative 24 to both sides. That way, the 24s cancel, and we get negative 16 on the right. All right. The last thing to do is to divide both sides by 2. And then it should be obvious that the answer is negative 8. To check our solution, we'll substitute negative 8 into the original equation, and we'll use the calculator for that. So we have 1 third times negative 8 plus 
minus 2. Give me a look at that from a fraction by hitting math, enter, enter. So negative 2 thirds on the left. And then on the right we have 2 thirds times negative 8 divided by 4 plus 1. And we get the same thing on the other side. So negative 2 thirds on both sides, that means that negative 8 is the solution to that equation.